What is up amigos? Today we're talking about splitter plates and how they affect a car's aerodynamics. So a splitter plate to begin with is, let's say we have a regular car here, this is the front, and we have the flow coming in at U-Infinity, and it comes in and a regular car doesn't have anything down here about. So the flow comes in, hits around here, and depending on the front of the car and the radiator setup, etc., the flow will stagnate and that will divide the oncoming flow into two main halves. The first half will be the part that comes over the top of the car. The second part will be the one that goes underneath. Now this underneath part, that's the important bit. And this is the part that the splitter plate really takes advantage of. So a splitter plate is in this second figure here where we have a extension, which is really supposed to be very flat and sharp. It comes out from the bottom. And what this does is it pretty much stops any flow from the front here coming down and going underneath the car. So all this flow, that actually gets redirected up as well. As such, the only flow that is going underneath the car is the part that is already getting split by that splitter plate and allowing it to come underneath. So why would we want to do this? And what is the aerodynamic benefit? So mainly what this does is it limits what happens underneath. So we can control the flow coming underneath and that segregates what's happening here and compared to over here. So we can manipulate the underbody and put different things on the underbody to create more downforce and be assured that there isn't gonna be more flow coming in and spoiling the situation. What's more, we can also pretty much guarantee that no separation will be happening around here. So what that does is, for example, if we were to have a, a general venturi effect of this car, where the distance between the underbody and the ground reduces, that means the flow has to speed up. Well, if we didn't have this splitter plate here, that would reduce how much we get this flow speeding up because we have now more flow coming in and it gets bleed out and etc. We can't control what's happening with the flow. Secondly, with the splitter plate, we can then control how the flow reacts downstream and for example, the diffuser, it will see a particular type of flow. So everything downstream of the splitter plate is now seeing a very particular type of flow that's not being corrupted by flow elsewhere. And also there are other things you can do with a splitter plate to increase the downforce. So naturally what happens is this flow that comes in here that would usually come underneath, this, this kind of stagnates a little bit around here. This creates a lot of high pressure as it hits this wall and can't go anywhere other than either through the radiator or up over. That creates high pressure here. Couple this with the relatively low pressure down here, that creates downforce naturally. But also if we were to put what's called a ramp, so a splitter plate ramp around here, which is literally just like a little bulge here. And this is part of the car now. That reduces the cross-sectional area here, which again creates a local venturi effect. So the flow comes in, it has to speed up, so the pressure, the pressure drops, and that increases the downforce. Now the important thing to note is that increasing the downforce through these two mechanisms and just the general car itself is not just about decreasing, increasing the downforce. It's also about where you increase the downforce. So the general car itself, you can then change where the downforce is occurring. With these two contraptions, these two regions here, that's increasing the downforce around the front of the car. So that means you can now change the handling of the car by either increasing the amount of downforce here or decreasing it and creating a much more balanced car. So in terms of this splitter plate, there are many different designs and you can go very, very complex. But generally speaking, it's just a looking from top. Let's say we have a front car here. It's just a flat plate that comes out and sometimes it extends further out, sometimes not, but that's literally just the general design and it's very thin. And typically the rule of thumb is the distance from the top of the splitter plate down to the ground, let's call this um, A, the dis this distance of the splitter plate, the length should be 2A. So the length of the splitter plate should be twice the distance from the height of the height of the car. Any more than that, you're not gonna get nearly that much more of a benefit, any less than that, you're not segregating the flow as much. And in terms of the benefits in terms of downforce, well, typically speaking, a splitter plate will give you anywhere between 10% and 50% more downforce and very good ones can go even higher than that. Like there are some really exceptional ones with end plates that flare up, etc., and they can go even much higher than that. But generally speaking, about 50% downforce is a good region to be in. So that is how a splitter plate works and how it changes the distribution of the downforce through these mechanisms and why you would want one. So if you like this video, make sure to like and click the subscribe button and we'll see you soon. Peace amigos.